Let me show you how I made this tiny but essential mod by reverse engineering an SDL with Mesh Mixer. Well, the mods have started on my Cocoon Create Touch, also known as a One How Duplicator i3 Plus and a Monoprice Maker Select. In a previous episode, I did some small mods as well as fitting a Flexion Extruder. Next on the cards is a bed upgrade, but there's one problem. It's really thick and therefore the Z adjustment is way out of whack. Now there are a couple of easy options. The first is just to adjust all four bed leveling screws until the platform moves down enough to fit underneath the nozzle. The other option is to move the standard sensor up using the slot on the side. But by far my favorite option is to introduce a Z height screw, which I can twist back and forth to change when it hits the limit stop and that means I don't have to adjust all four corners to make height changes. In my opinion, unless you have a self-leveling bed like in the Prusa Mark III, this type of thing is essential. I just don't understand why every time you want to move the base printing height up or down, you would need to do so on four corners and risk putting it out of a level. So let's spin this printer around and see what we're dealing with. All right, let's home the Z axis and see how it works. So we can see we have the switch for the end stop and the metal part comes down and touches that and there's only one way that we can adjust it apart from using the actual corner screws. So you might notice on the side of the printer we actually have slots here so we can raise up that end switch but it doesn't give us fine adjustment. I don't want to be relying on moving it up big steps every time that I want to make a change. So I thought I would start by looking at what solutions are available on Thingiverse. I found a number of Z-axis mods that aim to move it up and down just like I wanted. There was just one problem, they were all overly complicated. Eventually I thrilled through enough designs that I found one that I thought I would print. Let's put it in place and see how well it works. Installation couldn't be simpler. You simply insert a 3mm screw here, a long 3mm bolt here, and then you slide it up into place. and. And you do it up with a screwdriver to hold it in position. Now there was only one problem, it just did not line up. I knew I was going to have to make further modifications and I thought I would start with the base. So this is what I designed in Onshape, it's a pretty simple part. I measured up the end stop switch and I've got this little lip here and this little lip here to stop it from sliding through the bottom. Should be just enough width to squeeze it down through the top. I've double checked that the plug will fit through the hole, it's no wider than the actual end stop switch. And then I've got these two holes that are going to line up with the case and I've got room for lock nuts to squeeze in on the inside. I found that an ideal distance for getting this to happen on a Prusa i3 is about 5.5 and then they will fit in perfectly. They'll be a little bit tight but not too hard to jam in and they won't wobble about and come loose. So this was actually my first version, it was a little bit longer, but when it was in place it stuck out way too much. So that brought me to my final version here. You can see I've pressed in two lock nuts. The fitting it is super straightforward, you unplug the stop end stop, you put the plug through, you pull it down and it's got a nice squeeze fit. You don't even need the factory M2 bolts anymore. Now what we need to do is hold it in line and put in two screws from the side. Beautiful, sitting out nicely and actually there's still a problem. We've hit another snag and really this gets to the crux of what this video is about. I have a part that I've just designed and I don't want to abandon and I have a part of Thingiverse that's actually really close to what I need but needs minor adjustment. What I really need is a quick and easy way to measure the SDL so I can model my own version simplified but with the same dimensions, only moving the screw to where I want it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Alrighty, so we fired up Mesh Mixer and we have our part loaded. Now this part was perfect for me in every way apart from this screw position. Let me turn on wireframe so we can see a little bit clearer. Judging it by line of sight in real life, this hole needs to be roughly on this corner. And unfortunately, there's no quick way to do that. If you have a detailed mesh, you can try doing things like selecting a portion and then pressing T for transform and trying to move that portion into place. But as you can see here, it's not a very good translation and it's gonna introduce a lot of errors. So I needed another way. And there is a solution to that as well. 
and that is to come to analysis and then come to measure. Pen and paper in hand, I can then change the different types. This one that measures thickness is the default. And basically you click on a surface and it will project the line through until it reaches another surface. And I can write that down. That one's 5.7. This one here is 2.9, rounding up to three. This one here is three thick as well. This one here and so forth. There are some different modes that you can use. This one measures an internal gap. So if I click here, it'll tell me that this slot is 1.8 and that's a critical measurement for me because I really wanted to get my new part to fit as nicely as the old one. Things like the internals of circles don't work quite as well because it's hard to line up an exact normal through the middle. That one looks pretty good. And that one's set at about 2.7. Remembering that we need it slightly under three because we're aiming to cut the thread with the bolt as we screw it in for the first time. This one here aims to measure the entire way through something. So if we put it on a surface like this, it'll keep going the whole way through until it reaches the outside might have a use at some stage. This fourth one will project from an internal surface, keep going until it reaches the next external surface. This one here will let you click on a point and it will tell you the X, Y, Z coordinates. If you really needed to, you had something painstaking, you could click on a series of points and calculate some maths to work out some geometry. And finally, this one has no tooltip and I couldn't really work out what it did. It looks like it's to do with a radius, but I can't get anything to come up in the measurement area when I click. So please post in the comments if you know what that one is, but for now it remains a mystery to me. The only other option in the measure tool is this here. At the moment we have it set to normal, which will project 90 degrees out from a surface. Otherwise, if we wanted to lock it to X, Y, or Z, we can do that. And we need to change our measurement type. So this one here, is locked to X, but now if I change it to Y, it should twist 90 degrees, which it does, and it goes to this part here. So I collected all of my crucial measurements, I wrote them down on paper, and then I got designing in on shape. So here is what I ended up with for the new part. You can see that it's vastly simplified compared to the previous version of Thingiverse. I didn't need the extra ridge sticking out down the bottom. All I needed was this slot with the same dimensions as before, and like I planned to move the mounting hole or the adjustment screw pretty much on the corner, 45 degrees out. In fact, that's exactly how I did it. Let's get it printed and see how it fits. So here are the two parts side by side. You can see they're mostly the same. My old new one on the left is a little bit simplified. It doesn't have this extra ridge here. Let's get it on the printer. Okay, fitment works the same way as the last one. We simply slide it up from underneath and then we tighten the retaining screw. And now we can change the Z height by twisting this up and down. Now you will need a fairly long one with my design, but if you're not getting quite enough, you can always raise it up on these side ones which you saw earlier. Remember you need to plug in your end stop, otherwise you're gonna have a nasty collision. Moment of truth. Look at that, that is superb. I'm very happy with how that works. And now I should be able to twist it in to get enough Z clearance to install my mystery new bed. Now that was tremendously satisfying, even though what should have been a really fast and simple mod ended up being a little bit more convoluted than that. However, that technique in Mesh Mixer did save me a little bit of time and hopefully it can save you time in future if you are reverse engineering an STL for a mod or for anything else. Stay tuned for more upgrades to this bad boy here. Next, we're gonna be adding the mystery bed and we're also gonna be flashing some custom firmware. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you wanna see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really wanna support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.